in this screencast lecture we will try to understand about the diffusion that is a simple diffusion and the osmosis which are all coming under the category of a passive transport and then another form of a diffusion that is facilitated diffusion that will be mediated with the help of some special protein that have been embedded there in the cells. Now we look at into the explanation. The driving force of a passive transport is atomic or molecular movement. That is natural tendency of the atoms and molecules to be always in a constant random motion which is also referred as a Brownian movement. This can be very simply demonstrated by just pouring a drop of a colored solution there in the water or a drop of a perfume released on into a one part of the room can able to spread into the entire pot. This is a simple definition of the diffusion that is random movement of the atoms or molecules which is also referred as Brownian movement. Thus it is defined as a molecular movement in which atoms or molecules move in a gradient from an area of high density or concentration towards an area of low density or concentration. Diffusion serves as an important way in which cells can able to obtain certain molecules such as oxygen, carbon dioxide and water. The form of a diffusion is osmosis that is water moving through a selectively permeable membrane is referred as a osmosis. Thus in an osmotic system the membrane is selectively or differentially permeable which allows the free diffusion of water however it blocks certain other dissolved molecules to move in or out. Thus the living membranes generally block the entrance and exit of large molecules and permit free diffusion of water alone. If we carefully consider this kind of a passive diffusion does not happen when the molecule size is more than 600 Dalton. So the molecules of more than 600 Daltons need to be transported by using other mechanisms only. The osmotic relationship between the cells and their environment is usually determined by the relative concentration of the solution on either side of the cell membrane. So such systems will be commonly compared with the terms such as isotonic, hypotonic and hypertonic. Some more additional points related to the passive diffusion. Apart from water, glycerol can also be able to cross the plasma membrane by passive diffusion. It is also referred as a simple diffusion since process in which molecules move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration because of the random thermal agitation. Thus the rate of passive diffusion is dependent upon the size of the concentration gradient existing between the cell's exterior and its interior. A fairly large concentration gradient is in general required for adequate nutrient uptake by passive that is the external nutrient concentration must be high enough to start the process of diffusion. And finally the diffusion, passive diffusion permits the movement of small molecules like water, oxygen, carbon dioxide whereas larger molecules like ions and polar substances do not cross the membranes by a passive or simple diffusion but they need to be transported with the help of energy. Next, we look at the points related to facilitated diffusion. The rate of diffusion across a selectively permeable membrane is greatly increased by using certain carrier protein. Sometimes they are also referred as the permeases that were embedded there in the plasma membrane. Because a carrier aids the diffusion process to happen, it is referred as a facilitated diffusion. Look at the diagram there on the right hand side that shows the difference between the passive and facilitated diffusion. Especially the diffusion rate level goes off or reaches a plateau above a specific gradient value because the carrier is saturated that is under the facilitated diffusion condition. Whereas such kind of a saturation effect may not be noticed there in the passive diffusion. Thus a saturation effect that is noticed there in the facilitated diffusion is mainly due to the reason that the carrier protein that is involved in binding and transporting as many of the solute molecules as possible at a time may definitely leads to a saturation effect there. Thus the resulting curve that is formed for the facilitated diffusion resembles as that of a enzyme substrate based curve whereas the C 
simple passive diffusion is showing a very linear response there. Further, it is noted that the carrier proteins also resemble enzymes in their specificity for the substrate to be transported. Each carrier is selective and will transport only the closely related solute molecules. Even though a carrier protein is involved, the facilitated diffusion is truly a diffusion process. A concentration gradient spanning the membrane drives the movement of molecules and no metabolic energy input is required in this process. If the concentration gradient slows down or disappears, net inward movement of the molecule will be ceases. The gradient can be maintained by transforming the transported nutrient to another compound inside the cell or by moving it to a another membranous compartment which is the process usually happen there in the eukaryotic organism. Most of these carrier proteins are related to the major intrinsic protein, which is homologous to that of the mammalian islands protein. Two most widespread MIP, that is major intrinsic protein channels in the bacteria are aquaporins that involved in the transport of water and glycerol facilitators, which are involved in the diffusion of glycerol. If you look at into the mechanism of this facilitated diffusion, the membrane carrier can change its conformation after binding an external molecule or substrate and subsequently release the molecule into the cell interior. It then returns to the outward oriented position and ready to bind another solute molecule. Because there is no any specific energy input the molecule will continue to enter only as long as their concentration is greater on the outside. If it is lowered, again the molecule can go out also. That is a both way movement may be noticed. Practically, if you look at facilitated diffusion does not seem to be an important thing for a prokaryotic organism. The prime reason for that is the environment in which the bacteria lives will have a very less nutrient concentration outside to the cell so that the facilitation diffusion may not be operative on the nutrient uptake. Whereas the two common facilitator diffusion which we have earlier discussed, glycerol diffusion is mainly taking place there in Escherichia coli, Salmonella typhimurium, Pseudomonas and Bacillus. Whereas this facilitated diffusion is an important process there in the eukaryotic cells in which they use this process to transport a variety of sugars and amino acids.